how many versions of your hit song do you need to create? How many versions of your hit song do you need to create? If you don't know what I mean, you'll see. How many of your hot songs should you have? I'm sorry? You should have nine versions of your hit record. Are you ready for it? Pull out your notepad, take out your phone, record this. Remember this, because this is the shit that you drove from Missouri to your war, right? You didn't come here for branding and all the other shit. We want the real information. So before you leave the studio, you got your shit mixed and mastered, you should get a clean version. You should have an explicit version. You should have an instrumental. You should have an acapella. That's clean acapella, dirty acapella. Do you ever want a radio DJ to play it? If so, you should have a clean eight bar intro. You should have a dirty eight bar intro. Don't you want to get your fucking video on BET or network television? Because you're going to need a network television clean and you're going to need a network television explicit. It is a lot. It's a long checklist. I, I think he was pretty straightforward. Yeah. Nothing for us to add there. It, that <laughs> that was a fact, everything that he just noted. But um, I think the first thing that this represents is the fact that a lot of times it's more work than artists perceive on the front end. We perceive on the front end. Just coming yeah. to it, all of us in the game, even though you already had the video and it's just chopping things up at that point. Uh, or the song is just chopping things up at that point. Well, except for, you know, making it explicit. You know, there's some tweaks. Just the fact that you have to do that at the at a point where most people just think they're done. Yeah. All right. Really is something to think about. And honestly, it doesn't just go into radio tracks. Like he's talking about for a radio track campaign specifically. But Corey, I'm gonna let you list it out. You know how we talk about the YouTube version oh, of this yeah, right yeah, the yeah. same thing actually does apply in many ways across the board especially if you want to maximize what you get for your video views and the um the ways that they can be used for other people and we'll go a little bit into that after jacory drops the the list but go ahead and hit him with it yeah well first thing i want to say is i think the main thing or the main thing i get from what he's saying is pay attention to what you're submitting things to right it always yep. goes back to there's a different format. People accept different things. Like you said, there are going to be some TV networks that want the clean version and others are going to want the dirty version, right? Yep. So I think that's something that, especially a lot of smaller artists don't think about because they're not hitting that many outlets, you know, and that many um, things at one time. But I think it's a good habit to get yourself uh, into the, or a good habit to like build, build within yourself, you know what I'm saying? Just to get that stuff credit for if the opportunity just kind of comes up. Right. But what you're talking about is, is kind of advice that we give to, clients on the YouTube side, where we tell them when they release a song, they need a clean version, a dirty version, um, instrumental, uh, lyric video, a visualizer, and if you like the song enough, a music video, right? Or if the song has enough traction and attention, a music video. And now this is making me think maybe acapella, right? So that's six, the same way with this, you come out of it with nine different versions of your song that could be worked in different scenarios or just dropped in general to give yourself more musical content. That same strategy applied to YouTube makes it to where with every single song you drop, you now have at least five, six pieces of content for YouTube specifically to drop with it, right? What's the benefit of me doing that if I just want everybody to listen to my my music video? I mean, so I think the more obvious one is YouTube growth, right? It's probably one of the more consistent ways for an artist to keep up with the output of a YouTuber when it comes to YouTube. Cause that, that's kind of what got us to telling clients that is, you know, a lot of times they would ask us like, hey, what's the best way to grow my YouTube channel? Um, and it's like, well, you need to drop as consistently as the YouTubers do. Because the thing that I don't think artists think about is that YouTube isn't created for music artists. It's, it's created for creators, right? So the average artist maybe is dropping, let's say two, three pieces of content a week. If they're, I mean, not a week, but a month. They're just dropping a lot of um, a lot of music or something, right? But like there are YouTubers that drop three videos in, in a day, you know what I'm saying? Or three videos in a week. So these creators are moving at three, four X the speed you are on the same platform and the platform is gonna optimize for the the creators that have the highest output, which sadly is not the music artists, right? It's the, <laughs> the general YouTuber. But now you have this strategy where, you know, you at least can, maybe you're not completely competing with a YouTuber, but um, now thanks to like the additions of shorts, um, it's possible for you to get as close to that level as possible for music artists, right? I'm dropping a song a month. That means I have at least six pieces of content a month. I'm around my music specifically, like hard, longer form pieces of content, plus my 15 shorts I was gonna post anyway, plus, I don't know, this vlog, I already had 
playing coming off from this tour I just did, right? So I think that's the most obvious surface surface level benefit to it. And then this doesn't apply to every artist, but you know, getting a little bit deeper into it, some versions of the songs you can apply like the same ISRC codes to, and so the streams count when you talk about things like YouTube Music, um, and, and just like how those views are kind of counted specifically. So I think that's a benefit that like doesn't really matter for everybody. You know, very small percentage of artists, but the channel growth, like being able to just max out a, a hard long form content strategy for YouTube that can really be replicated because you can do this with every song you put out. Like every song, you know, clean, dirty, um, instrumental, right? A acapella, visualize a lyric video. And, then, and if it's moving enough, make a music video, right? Every song or would you just focus on the most important songs? I would do it for every song just to have as much content as possible. Because the other thing too is... But hold up, but you know, some of these people are talking about once a week. I mean, hey man, that's what come with that. That's what, that's what come with picking that <laughs> I ball don't know like about that. Full blown Gary Vee and like that for an artist, but no, I get, I get what you're saying. But you would, you would just go all yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Because the other thing about it, too, is, you know, we always tie back to how do the consumers want to consume things. And there are some people that like to have a visualizer pulled up on their, their TV while they're, while they're working in the background. You yes. Know See, you're touching on something important because, to me, I think people need to rethink what they think of when they hear a lyric video. Yeah. Right. So you can actually combine the audio and visualizer and lyric video into one. Yeah. If you want to. Right. Because the audio is just the audio. So it doesn't have to be the main video. They're going to hear it when they see the lyric video. Yeah. But the lyric video can now, based on how consumers consume stuff, be the visualizer. And then you just have it transcribed at the, the bottom. Just like how people watch a TikTok yeah. and then people see the text of what you're saying. Yeah. You can get away with doing that. So now you have that two in one because it's very hard for people to have very interesting lyric videos, right? I remember when lyric videos started popping and became and became way more popular before visualizers became a thing, right? And people just realized they could just do something interesting mm -hmm. beyond having the lyrics move around yeah, so much, right? Screen, yeah, so, bouncing yeah. on the screen. <laughs> And then everybody was just trying to like, like, you know, ponder on how they can make it interesting and more and more interesting. And you can only make that but so many so interesting, right? Yeah. People aren't gonna care but so much when it's all based around the lyrics and that's it. But if you got a cool visualizer because it was from a video game or something that you want to represent, like mm -hmm. Lil Nas did with a uh, Red Dead Redemption and putting it on Old Town Road, or if you wanna just actually have like some footage it could be like a, a vlog of you right so that represents the song topic or not not a not a music video but like just some flash and footage kind of yeah. like how you think about the uh canvas on spotify yeah right exactly. yeah like it could be like that just repeating over and over again of you or it could be something a little bit more extensive but still not the pressure of a music video um or again of course just taking content from anywhere anywhere and then you just transcribe the lyrics at the bottom yeah. and that'll be good enough it'll hit the same purpose and then you have that little bit of branding experience to make it more interesting just a uh a norm than a uh regular lyric video and fortunately for artists that's so much easier to pull off most people don't necessarily have the lyric video skill set at least without wasting a lot of time or yeah. spending a lot of time rather you know to get it done but a lot of people you know we all got phones yeah we got phones <laughs> we can we know how to rip something yeah. from somewhere else and just paste it on top of a video and put that together so um that that's what i would say to the youtube list like when we first started doing it it didn't it 
we weren't in a space where consumers would respond to visualizers as much and as well in these different types of content and TikTok wasn't popping as heavy. And so people weren't used to just being seeing transcriptions and stuff as much. But the way things have involved, you could take what three of those things off that list and make it one. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think the best example I've kind of seen of it, I know the weekend does it a lot when he drops music. And then what made me realize it was uh the way Cardi B released up. Cause I was just looking at it, I was like, man, she dropped like nine pieces of content to this this one song on YouTube. Right. She, she had some other elements to it, right? Like she had like um BTS part one and two of the music video. She did this one thing where she called it a mood board, and it was really just in my opinion, the same thing as a visualizer, but it was just a bunch of different photos flashing across the screen while the song played in the background. So like, she really milked it, you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. why I say I think like, to your point, yeah, if you're an artist where you don't have the resources to get all this stuff made, then yeah, a lot of them can be knocked into, you know, like a lot of them can, you can take three ideas and turn it into one. Yep. But I mean, I think if you're trying to get like maximum bang for buck, you know, like maximum output for each one, you have the the budget for it and, and the, the brand um to be able to put it together. I do all of it. have all of it. One hundred percent. Like just just shooting out, bro. Just just max out YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's put that on the screen real quick just for people. Um, oh yeah, let's to, look at to it. be able to see. So yeah, Cardi B has Cardi yeah. B mood board visualizer. Yeah, uh, the live performance. All right, and let me. Kind of play a little bit of the move board visualizers. So you can get a sense of what it looks like. Oops. Copyright? Nah, it's the. No, I'm not going oh, to. Nah, it's, it's muted. Right. Yeah, okay. it's muted. Now we're talking about the visual. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to hear anything. <laughs> we ain't dealing with none of those copyright strikes. All right, so it's like a bunch of pictures flashing, mm -hmm. which is which is dope. And a little bit of video thrown in between. But that's actually pretty hard. Yeah, that's a fun. Because this actually does look like. It was the mood board for that scene. So mm -hmm. that's how they're matching it up. It's like when we came up with this scene, this was the mood board. Mm -hmm. And they probably had, you know, a mood board before this mood board. Yeah. You know what I mean? When yeah. they were in pre production. But but no, this is hard. I I actually like that concept. I would like to see that more. Yeah. This is show them the scene and then show them the the mood board or inspiration for that particular scene because that's what we do creatively all the time anyways yeah. usually some kind of inspiration or because it's hard to describe creative shit to people without giving them some reference points anyway. yeah yeah so now nah, that's that's a real hard and that's what idea. i like about this too is like it's taking the mundane taking that thing you have to do anyway and mm -hmm. turn it into like a really interesting piece of content heck yeah no nah, yeah. that that's a hard ass yeah but she got a lot yeah instrumental instrumental is when i can understand like why everybody wouldn't want to do Right, you know that to me, I guess, would depend on your relationship with the producer, how yeah, they feel about and, it, and also just yeah, you know, your relationship with owning your own shit. Period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, niggas don't want to get else no. take the track and then run it up on. Them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And niggas don't want to get Lil Wayne from some <laughs> random artist on YouTube. Right. right. So she also has her performance with Meg The Stallion. Oh yeah, the live performance video. Um, yeah. Um, she has. Behind the scenes. Part one and two. Part one and two. All right. So it's like really made a moment out of this. Where's part one? All right. So there's part one. I'm not going to play part one. Then there's the instrumental, an official lyric video. All this stuff is beautiful because the artist doesn't have to be involved. Mm -hmm. We already got the footage post production and stuff like that. So yeah, okay. So. What else does she have? We're going to count how many videos this is. The official music video, <laughs> official audio, and the radio edit. There we go. So she, Cardi B put up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of content posting this video. Yeah. Um, And then let's look at the start and the end. I'm saying she'll follow up. Uh... You know, dude's advice in the beginning clip, she really would have had to drop like 16, you know what I'm saying? Because imagine she did like <laughs> each of these for the other versions and right, things like that, bro. It could, get, it could get crazy, bro. True, true. Yeah. Uh, let, it, let me see. That was February 5th, 2021 when the radio edit dropped. And then the mood board, which was the final piece of content, was... March 16th. March 16th. So, yeah, she was able to take a whole month to pull all that stuff together. That's dope. That's dope. So... This is exactly what we're talking about. Of course, it's not a one size fits all. Maybe you've 
for some videos you do something like a mood board and some video or, or songs some songs you might not be inspired to that yeah, extent right exactly but the the concept is still true uh, you want to have those multiple versions out there it's an easy way to milk the song itself and get different parts of your vision out there and then also on the other end it also helps other people use your content for their platform without you having to go back because that's really the main purpose of what um he mentioned i, I, don't, I actually don't know his name but i know it's uh ig art rev soul or at least that's where they is posted from no and that's think, uh that's where our coalition got right he not i don't know if he's with rap coalition but he they have the uh the podcast the oh with wendy yes the yeah come on i know the name of podcast i I hate that I'm I'm missing it right now. Um, cheat the, the cheat code podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like he's he's one of those people. Um, but now nah, yeah, shout out to him for that that um post. Really dope. And we actually have something that goes along with the same category. 